Well, welcome back to week two of the Circle of Vitality. You know, as we add more live foods to our diet, there's just so many fun and exciting recipes that we can um, incorporate into our regular eating plan. And today we're gonna do a chopped salad. And this salad, you can do anything you want in it. There is a set recipe, but add what veggies you like. So we're gonna start today. I've already sliced or diced this um, cabbage. So here we have red cabbage and green cabbage. We're gonna throw in here, it's a cup of each. We have a cup of shredded carrots. I did not shred these, you could shred your own, but these come from Whole Foods, or organic carrots that are already shredded and they're just real nice, they hold up well. And this is sprouted mung beans and lentils. Have you ever had those Chinese um, bean sprouts that are real long and white? That's what these little green ones. These little green beans, they're kind of yellow with the skins gone. That's what these are, these are mung beans. And if you sprout them till they're mature, they'll be the Chinese bean sprouts that you eat in your Chinese food. And these are sprouted, so they're full of nutrients. You just soak them in water and then drain them. And I have a little sprouting lid on top of a canning jar and I dump it out and let it sit upside down draining for during the day. And then at night I rinse them and turn them upside down again until they start to sprout, which in a cold kitchen, this takes about three or four days. In a warm kitchen in the summer, it can be done in two days or less. So we add these in here. These are beans that are full of protein and vitamins, and since they haven't been cooked, they're just nutrient filled. Anytime you get a sprout, anything that starts to sprout, there's more nutrients in that. That's a life force. So this just adds a lot of uh, vitality to this salad. Then we're gonna add a scallion or a green onion. With these, I've already washed them. We're just going to take the tops, the top off. And with the green onions, I cut them in half. And this is a really thick one. So I'll go ahead and slice it down the middle. And the greens are kind of thick. Cut off any that don't look real pretty. And then I'll slice them down the middle again. And then I put them together. And one of the tricks to holding a knife the right way and using a knife is to hold it with your last two or three fingers. Grip the blade with your thumb and forefinger. Just kind of hold it like that. It gives you more control. So you're going to hold it with your last two fingers especially. Depends on the kind of knife and how the handle is. But you're going to grip that blade. A lot of people when they cut they'll do this and it really wears out your finger. So grip the blade this way and you keep the point of it down and then you're going to rock. And as you rock, your knife never comes off the, the counter or the cutting board. And as you do that, you can go very fast, keep your fingers out of the way. And one of the, the best things you can do for yourself, the best investment you can make is to get a sharp knife. Sam's Club sells a two pack of these knives for $11 or so. So we're just gonna add that. In. And again, this is a very quick and easy salad that you can use with whatever leftovers you have. And we're going to use some romaine lettuce. You could use kale, you could use romaine, you could use green leaf. Iceberg is not the, the lettuce of choice. It has a lot of water nutrients. Uh, not, not a, it has a lot of water in it. So it's good as far as that is concerned, but it really doesn't have many nutrients. The romaine lettuce, the darker leafy greens are what um, carry the nutrients. So we're just going to mix this up. Now if I were making this at home, I would probably add in more lettuce just for color. You can just tell, go with what, you, what, what works for you. All right, and for the dressing, we're going to use, this is a apple cider vinegar. I'm going to use a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. I don't use a lot of oils in my food preparation. I just don't think we need them added in. It adds calories, and a lot of the oils are not heart healthy. The toasted sesame oil, only using a, a tablespoon, I think is okay because it adds to the, the flavor of what we're doing. And I need some agave. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit of agave. 
one big squirts a tablespoon. And then just a little bit of sea salt. So I'm going to add a half a tablespoon, half a tablespoon, half a teaspoon of sea salt. And I'm going to whisk this. And whisk it together until it's smooth and the oil isn't separated. Okay, and we're just going to take a taste of it. It's perfect. Now this is a lot of salad. If you're serving this for your family, this would be great. Go ahead and put the dressing on it and mix it up. But if you're going to make this for your week and you're going to eat it for a couple of days, take the portion out that you're going to eat and put in a bowl and put a little bit of dressing over it. And then it, that way, this will save for a couple of weeks in the fridge, at least a week and a half, two weeks without going bad if you keep it sealed. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour this in. And just mix it up. It has a very light dressing. The dressing is not real heavy. For those of you who are used to having real heavy dressings on your salads, you're going to have to adjust your taste buds a little bit and start to learn to be able to taste the vegetables underneath all that dressing. Dressing contains so much, um, so many things that are not good for you. The, the oils mainly, the calories, the empty calories. Okay, so we're going to serve this up. And this is one of my favorite salads. If you'd like, you can top this with some sliced almonds. I think I'm going to add just a few uh, black sesame seeds just to give it a little offset of color. And you can add those into the whole salad if you'd like or just on top. So there we have a nice salad for lunch. All right. The next salad we're going to make is going to be a kale salad. And this has become one of the favorite salads at the kitchen. And for people who don't like kale or don't think they like kale or don't think they like green, it becomes one of their favorite salads. There's just something magical about kale. Kale is full of phytonutrients, antioxidants, the dark leafy green veggies are amazing for health. When you, this is called dinosaur kale. Lactinato kale is the name, but we call it dinosaur because it kind of looks like dinosaur skin. And this is curly kale. Both will work. The way we get kale, we, this is a real thick stem that we don't want in here, so I call it stripping. You just put your fingers so on this kale, you're going to have to break it away from the stem a little bit. You just grab it with a thumb and finger, forefinger, and you pull it off, and then you strip it. These are good for if you have a good juicer or if you make your own vegetable stock, you can throw those in. So you just strip it. Now here's the curly kale. It's the same way. This has a lot of leaves that are separate, so it falls apart a little bit more. But again, it just comes right off. You can get your frustrations out this way. You can train your children to do this and set them up to do it. Okay, the next step is going to be the chopping of it. And I've already chopped some just to save time. This kale is easy. The dinosaur kale, you take it and just roll it up thin. And you're just going to slice it real thin. The thinner you slice it, the better it's going to be. Kale is kind of tough to eat raw, and that's probably why a lot of people don't like it. But when you massage it, it really breaks it down, and it's like it's been sautéed or lightly steamed. It just breaks down, and you'll start to smell the phytonutrients being released, the chlorophyll being released into the air. I love the smell of kale being processed in my kitchen or juiced. You might even be able to smell it through the camera. It's so strong. Okay, and then we're going to do the curly kale. The same way, you just kind of have to bunch it. Just keep your fingers curled. Keep your fingers curled back. So if the knife hits anything, it's going to hit the side of your knuckle. We're going to 
throw this in here. Okay, before I start massaging it, I'm going to go ahead and get my avocado prepared for the dressing. An avocado, when it's firm to the touch, is when it's ripe. So you want to make sure that you can, if it's hard, you don't want to use it. You won't be able to get it out of the skin. And I just hold my thumb here and I just slide it around until it's all the way around and then you take it and you twist. And then you, with your knife, and you're just going to turn it. The easiest way, a lot of people will try to pull it off this way, but their hands around the knife blade. I just take my thumb and just push it in. And you will need a spoon, actually. For what we're going to do here, because we're going to use this for a dressing, normally if I was making guacamole or chocolate pudding, I would just use the spoon and scoop it out. But I'm going to do what I call scoring. Be careful if you have a sharp knife that you don't go through the skin. And then I just cut across so that when I scoop it out, it's already diced and it's just less messy. We have all these nice little dice diced pieces of avocado. We'll do the same thing here. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice. I do squeeze all of my own lemon juice. I've got an electric citrus juicer. It makes it so nice. And then I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of salt in here. The lemon keeps the avocado from turning brown as quickly as it could. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for a minute. And we're going to go on to our bell pepper. This is kind of a funny little bell pepper. Normally, what I like to do is cut the top where the top of the bell pepper is. You just cut right below it. And when you cut right below it, then you can pull the insides out. I usually pull it out and shake the seeds out. And then the top, you can just pull the stem out so nothing goes to waste. And then I just dice it. Again, keeping my um, knife blade on the, on the table. This one is going to be a little more unique because it's curly. They don't have to be fine diced. They can be just quarter inch size pieces. And we're going to set those aside. This one still had some seeds in there, so I'm going to pull those out. Now, red bell peppers are part of the nightshade family, so they are part of the tomatoes and eggplants. If you have a lot of inflammation in your body, it's suggested that you don't eat a lot of tomatoes and eggplants, and especially the red bell peppers, because they kind of um, work against the inflammation. That one has a little spot in it I'm going to cut out. We just keep dicing. Then we're going to take the do the green onion like we did last time. Cut the top off. This is a thick one again, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half. And again, any of these salads, adjust them to your flavors, what you like. If you don't like green onions, don't put green onions in. If you like some other vegetables, you can add them in. Really, it's what you make it. Raw food is based on the textures and um, the seasonings. Cucumber is the next one. We're going to seed a cucumber. Let me tell you, this is the best vegetable peeler, Titan. T-I-T-A-N. You can get them at Bed Bath & Beyond. Some grocery stores carry them. 
They usually come in a two pack that has a julienner with it. We'll, that will do carrots like we did um, in the salad earlier. So, but this will peel anything. You can peel a pineapple with it if you want to peel, peel a pineapple. I don't have any need to peel a pineapple, but they really work and it will work both ways. So you can just peel very quickly. And if you've had a unsharp knife, a dull knife or a dull vegetable peeler, it really makes being in the kitchen complicated and not a lot of fun. And I'm just going to cut this in half and then cut it in half again. And we're just going to take our a small spoon and scoop the seeds out. You could leave the seeds in, but they tend to make things watery because they're just full of water. And when to, once the salad is um, prepared, it breaks down a lot as it is. There's water in it that we're going to massage out and it can just be a little too liquid. So I like to scoop the seeds out and get a nice diced. So again, I'm just going to slice this. And then I'll turn it the other way and dice it. And all of these are going in together so it doesn't matter if they get mixed up on the cutting board or in a bowl. With raw food, it is allowed to play with your food. And it's even allowed to have desserts first because they're healthy. So there, there are some um, new advantages to eating a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so this is kale. And we're going to just massage it. It didn't get sliced very well. And when you massage kale, you just want to take it and just rub it between your fingers and it starts to break it down. You'll start to smell it and it'll start to get soft and in just a couple of minutes it's going to look like it. I'm used to throwing food. <laughs> it, it will start to look like it's been steamed. So just massage it for three or four minutes. And it won't be quite as fly away as it is right now. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead. Normally I would probably do that just a little bit more. I'm going to add the avocado in with the lemon. And that is going to get massaged into it also. So the avocado is actually going to become the dressing. And you're not going to notice that there's avocado chunks in it. And the flavor is just absolutely amazing. It's, if you have gloves to wear, it's great because otherwise your hands will get kind of stained green from all of that lovely chlorophyll. So again, you can't overdo it. Just keep doing it until it's really, it's broken down and it's really soft. And I would say probably takes five minutes or so. This is a great one to get your kids some gloves and have them go to town with it. Kids or grandkids. But you can see how it already has decreased the amount. It's very filling because it is full of nutrients and fiber. That's one thing with raw food is the fiber content. Raw foods are full of water and fiber and we have to have fiber to keep everything moving out of our body. And we also need um, the fiber. It helps with cholesterol, keeping it regulated. It helps with blood sugar. When we have fiber in our diet, it causes the blood sugar, uh, sugars to be um, absorbed into the bloodstream much slower with the fiber. So anytime you're eating raw veggies like the cabbage or the kale, cucumbers and these that have, these veggies that have fiber, it actually makes your body work more efficiently. Alrighty. I'm going to take my gloves off, add a little bit of garlic to it. This is granulated garlic. I'm 
and give it a stir. Perfect. So then you can fill up your bowl. You'll be amazed at how um, your body will start craving the greens as you start putting the greens into your body. It's just, it's a natural thing. Your body is looking for nutrients. And this is full of nutrients. Have you ever eating, eaten a Big Mac and fries and then 30 minutes later you're digging through the bag trying to find more fries because you're hungry? That's a normal response because you've eaten a lot of calories but you've eaten very few nutrients. So when you're eating something like this, you're satisfied and it'll stay with you for two or three hours. You won't be hungry after eating it. Our body is constantly looking for nutrients and when our brain doesn't find them, it signals that we need to eat. That's why we can be hungry after eating a lot of junk food. You can eat donuts. They go down very quick, very easily. But not the kale, you have to chew the kale. You have to chew the cabbage. And we should be chewing 20 to 30 times each bite. And if you think about the softer foods that you eat, the processed foods, really maybe six, seven chews and it's starting to slide down your throat. But when you're eating something like this, you start counting, you have to chew 20 to 30 times if you're going to chew. I mean, if you're going to um, break it down, unless you swallow your food whole. And amylase is released in the mouth when we start to chew, so it breaks down the carbohydrates. So it's very important, chewing is very important. And this way you, you don't have a choice. You're forced to chew and it's, it's good to do. So I appreciate you coming along with me this week. I'm believing your journey is going well and we'll see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>